The reason why people ask us to get involved is because of what we have noticed are the four stages of Islamization of any area. Now the first stage is the parking jihad. That's not a very serious form of jihad. We can all think of, of worse forms. But if you imagine that you are a retired couple, or classically, a little old retired English lady, and you've worked hard all your life, you've lived in that property. Most of your life you may have inherited it from your parents. Suddenly it's quite disturbing. You can't get out of the driveway. You can't get out of your street. You have to rearrange your commute. You have to rearrange your trip to the supermarket because the road is blocked. And people come to me and they say to me, at first we didn't understand what was going on. We thought, why are these Muslim people such inconsiderate parkers? We just don't understand. And why is it that there is never a parking inspector when you want one? When I go to when I park in the centre of town, if I'm on a double yellow for five minutes, I get slapped with a ticket. These privatised uh, um, parking inspectors, they could come around our neighbourhood and make a fortune in, in five minutes flat. I wonder why they're not doing it. And then stage two of the process happens and they find out. Now stage two is the dominance phase. Or uh, as it is better known, the F off misses, this is our area now stage. Because that is what people hear and it is women who bear the brunt of it. Would you mind not parking in front of my driveway, please? F off, Mrs. This is our area now. Would you mind not parking inside my driveway on my property? That does happen. F off, Mrs. There's nothing you can do about it. Would you mind please moving your car out of the way? Because I'm going to the supermarket. F off, Mrs. This is our area now. And people then realise that the area has changed and they become very distressed about it. What they do at that point is to try to hide away from it. People will try to say to themselves, as long as I can shut my front door, I can get away from it. That's out on the street. I don't like it. I know no one's going to try to help me. I know that if I complain, I will get done for racism, which is the way people think of it. The law has, has that effect. It is intended to have that effect. So they say, well, what can we do? Let's try and forget about it, live out on time, shut the front door and watch TV. Then they can't. Because stage three is where they get the knock on the door. And stage three, I refer to it as the plastic bag stage, because what you get is knock, knock, two Muslim men on your doorstep. Now, again, this tends to happen with the more elderly and more vulnerable. This is quite upsetting to watch. It's upsetting to hear about. I get people coming to me saying, this has happened to my mum. This has happened to my dad. Can you help us? And the only advice I can offer is, no, you have to go. You have to, you have to move. Sell up, cut your losses, and go. We will come back for your property. We will come back for your area in 10 or 15 years' time. You'll have to wait, but we will do it. Now, what then happens is, those two Muslim men will say, don't you think you should sell your property? It's not for sale. Well, you're going to have to sell sometime. I wouldn't sell it for the amount of money you're offering. The 20s and 50s you've got in your plastic bag. No white person is going to buy this place from you, so you have to. Now, those Muslim men, unfortunately, are right. You won't find a non-Muslim who wants to buy a house near a mosque. And the money that is offered it varies between about half, a quarter and a half of the market value, usually somewhere around a third of the value of that property. And what a lot of people say is, I've lived here all my life, I'm not going. These people are not forcing me out. But it doesn't work because stage four then comes, and stage four is the, the harassment stage. I had a, a, a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks after I received that letter, that statement that I read out to you from Paris, a call from an older lady on behalf of an even older lady who owned a five bedroom house, which Muslim men wanted to buy off her. They were saying, we'll give you a one, bed, a one bedroom flat in return, and we'll give you a round the world cruise. And, uh, so give us your house. And she said, no, I've lived here all my life. I like it. It's got a nice garden. 
and what she was finding is her television cable was being cut. She would spend £40, which she didn't have, to repair it. That's, well, I think the pension is about £120 a week. And then it would get cut again. She'd spend another 40 quid, and it would get cut again. So she stopped getting it repaired. Smashed windows. A gate got knocked off. The gate post was pushed over. Stuff is getting put through her letterbox. And there is nothing you can do. You just have to say, you have to leave. Eventually, she will be, I, I can predict what will happen, she will be yanked out of her house by her children. One of her children will say, Mum, you've got to go. We don't care about your house. It's you who are worried about. And she will be pulled out. And, and that house, that house will go. But we will get it back one day. Now, that is not talked about. When I mention, when those things are mentioned by people who have had it happening to them at MOSS planning applications, local authorities just, they can't hear it, they won't hear it. They don't want to believe it. It's obvious why they don't want to. When two pieties collide, all you get is an undignified silence. So who are they going to go against? So, so they will ignore that. And people know they're going to get no protection. They will get no protection from their local authority. The problem is that this will be resolved one way or another. You, you can't contain that kind of disorder for very long. 